Buenas tardes a todos. Welcome back again to the creativity area. Now we have uh, an artist from Lebanon, a uh, musician, who will talk about um, what it is to be an independent and political artist. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, welcome everyone, Rayesh Beck. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, hi, so my name is uh, Reyes Beg. Can you, can you hear me? And I'm a um, musician from Beirut, Lebanon, uh, and I work in urban music and especially into hip-hop. And today in this lecture, I will talk about how to be and to live as an independent artist. And uh, this is, there is two parts. This is the first part. And the second part is how to live as a political artist and how those two parts are linked. So I need to explain first what is it to be an independent artist. So um, when you say independent, you are independent from the music industry. What is the music industry? Mainly in the 90s, uh, they created the CD. It was a digital quality. Everybody won this quality, so the music industry and record labels produce a lot, a lot of CDs. Everybody would buy anything or CDs. It's one of the best quality in the 90s. So they made a lot, a lot of money, and they start producing a lot of bands. Uh, what does that mean when a record label, when a band signed with a record label, uh, at that time, it was the paradise. They would have everything, recording studio, uh, mastering, mixing, promotion, blah, blah, blah. The record label will take care of everything, and they will also take care of your money. Which means when an artist signs a contract, uh, in best case scenario, he will get 10% of the royalties, which means when you buy the CD from your favorite artist, the artist just gets one euro and a half. This is the best scenario. And you're paying 15 euro or sometimes 17 euro on a CD, thinking that you're giving a lot of money. You love this artist, but in fact, sometimes you're not even give, giving the artist one euro. So can you imagine the problem? Um, what happened is, um, and I think it's, uh, it's great, is piracy and the internet. I don't know if you remember Napster, but great. It was the one of the first peer-to-peer, -peer, and then people would exchange every music, every movie on the internet. So the music industry was decreasing. One bad thing the music industry did is that they realized that the consumer, the number one consumer, is a, the teenager. So they start producing teenage music, music for teenagers. And that was hell, because every and each music they produce was made for teenagers. And this is how they went to the star system. What is the star system? Star system is based on notoriety and not creativity, <clears throat> which means a football player can do a CD and he will sell a lot, even if the guy is not gifted, not talented. Even if the guy has nothing to say, he will sell a lot of CD. Um, one bad thing about the star system is that it is quantity versus quality. We want to sell its marketing. So the relation between the artist and the listener was something like this. You want, you want to buy the CD, you have to go to the store, there is a distributor, there is a record label, and then there is the artist. So the artist is very far away, like we saw in this images, the artist, the star is above anyone. He's a god, he's a Jesus. You cannot touch him, you cannot talk to him, you will never get in touch with your favorite artist. This is hell. He, he just came and he said, okay, I'm God, I'm here, look, my, my voice is bigger than yours and what I have to say is amazing. I am a star, you are nothing. Uh, with the internet and with um, piracy, the relation between artist and listener has moved from this to this. 
the artist is from a community, inside a community, and he is sharing his music with the listeners. So it is not about selling. The guy does not sell anymore. He's independent, so he doesn't have to make a lot of money. And there is not a big company to pay a lot of employees. He's on his own. It's more difficult for him to create, but he is sharing his music with everyone. So, for instance, if you buy from an independent artist, this is what the artist gets. So you see the difference between the first artist signed getting 10%, one euro, and this. Of course, the good, the good point is that the artist can sell the CD uh, cheaper because he doesn't have to sell it at 15 euros. So everybody's happy. You're getting your CD for 10 bucks instead of 15, and he is getting around seven bucks and a, and a half. So this is completely different. Talking about this uh, kind of sharing music, just one of my experiences that we made last year is that we gave an a cappella, we gave the voice of one song to anyone on the internet, and we ask anyone who would like to make music on it. And it was a remix contest, and everybody can download the voice and make his own music. And it was a huge success. We got 18, oh, 80 sorry, uh, remixes, techno, hip-hop, uh, rock, anything from all around the world. And I think that today the exchange is more powerful because the listeners are not listeners anymore. They are sharing their experience. They can comment on a song, they can talk to you, and you can reply. First of all, because you don't have zillions of uh, fans. You have like 3,000 fans, so it is easier. It's more human relation. And second, because they are getting involved into the composition, the writing, and that's a new way to see music. Also, the format of a song has changed. Do you know that most of the songs are 3 minutes 40? Do you know why? Nobody knows why. No, for radio, because radio decided that doing a 3 minutes 40 song would be great to put advertising between songs. So it's only advertising purpose. We are only listening to music because one guy thought 30 years ago that it would be clever to put advertising behind the songs. It is crazy. And even the form of the song, like intro, chorus, verses, chorus, verses, this is also a structure that they have proven that putting three chorus in a song makes you remind the song and makes you sing it. So it is really marketing. The music today is really marketing. And uh, we have the chance to, to be independent today. So how to be independent? I mean, now you, let's say you don't have a record company, you have a song, you have your guitar, and you're just singing this song, but you don't have a lot of money, and you want to record, you want to share with people. Before answering the question, um, I would like to show you a video. Uh, and then we talk about the video later. Sorry. تسألني إن بعد بحب حقل لك مأكد تتصور قد إيه مشتاق لصار لي عنا كتير مبعد في كذب وقول إنه بكرة رجع له ملك اللي مكذب عليا كذب بالزيت وشح بالدرة وآخر مرة شفتها فيها كنا على المطار أمي عم تترجيها ولبت الشح لها شو اللي صار برمي الظهرة ومشيت تركت الحالة ابكي وأنا عم جري تفسرها ولك ما خلتني احكي فسر لها ليش بعصي أضمع عليا بغار دمع كل ما اسمع ما جدا تغني نزار هو يوم بزورة فيه خلى جواب الحزورة فيه هو نفس يوم لاخوات الشعر مو طبعا حيكونوا فيه لهلا بضل مشتاق مثل ايام اخترق واللي صار صار ما كان مصيرنا نفطري خلي سنين تمرق والايام تقطع خليها تسلم على الجدة والتيتا بشوفه لما برجع مدينة بيروت مدينة بيروت بيروت مدينة تكون عبارة مختارة مدينة بيروت مدينة بيروت بها المدينة فيك تربع بها المدينة فيك تموت مدينة Mad, 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 mad,
Okay, I'm not gonna watch the whole video, but my point is that this is the kind of video that we do. How do we do such song and such video with few money, with almost no budget? Well, it is about uh, having a simple idea. Today, the internet, YouTube, social networks, you know everything about internet, is fast. Everybody is zapping, everybody wants to see small idea. Uh, most of the videos so on YouTube are cats walking on blah blah blah. This is, there is a lot of trash and there is a lot of very good idea. And I am pretty sure that w once you're on the internet, you just spent half or one hour zapping from a video to another, a JPEG to another. I do this every morning. Um, first of all, because the format has changed, We've been, in the, in the 90s, it was the wave, the digital quality, 16 bits. Today, it is the MP3. The MP3 quality is one of the worst quality ever created, but it is light. You can put it on uh, iPod and blah, 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 telephone. That's why they created MP3. But the sound quality is really bad. And earphones, the earphone of the iPod or the speakers here on the laptops are the worst speakers ever. But you don't mind. If you don't mind, why musician would mind making good quality while the people doesn't care? So the thing is, you can have a home studio for... Well, this is the cheapest home studio that you can have, but I mean, the song that you've heard, I've recorded it in my room with this, a microphone, uh, um, this is a sound card, and it is not the price of the laptop, it's the price of the software. I assume that we all have computers at home and professional speakers, so we've recorded in the room, and uh, I mixed in my room, and nobody ever told me, yeah, you know, the quality is not really good, um, I can feel it. No, it's about the feeling. Of course, my music is based on lyrics, but not always. I work with many musicians, and sometimes we go record on the street. I mean, why isolate a song, a sound, when we are surrounded by noise? Let's, let's keep this noise. Also, the video that you saw, I did it with this, a small uh, camera and a software and a tripod, and it, basically it was made in my living room with a small projector that I borrow from a friend and we just put images. The song is about exile, it's about living abroad and the relation between one and the other uh, in different cities. So this is how to make um, easy promotion, easy video. Of course, it is not the same point of view. You don't need to make a big cinematographic video clip with a huge crew. Do we need this? I think it is more thinking about the content than uh, about the packaging. Let me show you another video that I did, even simpler than this one. The song is called um, Schizophrenia. I'm talking about the double culture between because I grew up between Paris and Beirut. So each, each screen is all Paris or Beirut. On est tous nés innocents. Demande à ma mère, je suis pas né avec un couteau entre les dents. Je débarque dans ce pays, sourire aux lèvres et les yeux tristes. Les voir s'entretuer me rappelle que nous sommes tiers mondistes. J'ai pas réussi à m'intégrer dans cette société complexe et complexe et toujours annexée. L'excès d'être en marge est vexant. Les yeux remplis de vie, de vivre cette vie plastique. Noyé au Pepsi, regard placide. Ça 
s'adapte au deux langages, on s'adapte au double jeu. À l'est, tu es l'européen, en français impeccable. À l'ouest, fils du bled, t'es fier d'être un arabe. À force de faire le caméléon entre les deux extrêmes, je crois que j'en suis devenu schizophrène. Je perds mes repères par milliers, je les retrouve dans le son. Je change de caractère et d'attitude selon. Ok, so you got the idea. The thing is um, just simple ideas, and you don't need the aesthetic that we, we use in the 90s. So the question that we are asking ourselves as a musician, shall we keep on trying selling music? Is sell music is a, a good idea? And what we thought about is that we must give at least um, a lot of free songs. But shall we give it for free? Yes and no. Um, the thing is that if we don't need money, what we need, what we think we need is data. Because we believe that we need to understand who are the listeners, where do they come from, why would they like to listen to my music. So there is a form that you can fill and look that only we require the email. You can you cannot write the name, the age of the city, it doesn't matter. But it is important for us to know who is listening. So it is exchanging music and data. Um, so like we just saying, to be independent artist, you have to be multi-talented, you have to do a lot of stuff, and less music and more of web design and photography, video, blah, blah, blah. Without being an expert, just trying yourself. It is the do-it-yourself thing. You have to do everything yourself. And you, you began to be a small company because you began to do what was the recording company doing, but in another way. But the question is, how are we going to make money? Now that I gave my song for free, I bought some uh, machines I can OK, record, make small videos. Well, the only thing is live performance. Of course, a performance is uh, you cannot pirate a performance. I mean, or you are here or you are not here, and that's it. And the thing is that um, we used to, in the 90s, we're going to talk about format. In the 90s, we used to have drums and bass and guitar, we, we love that, with the singer in the front and the whole band and the, the keyboard guy. And I think this is over because we have to lower the budget of the performance. We have new technologies, we can do performance with two or three person. And what I think is that a good band is a band that can fit in a car because it is about logistics. If you are two people, you can travel a lot, you can go wherever you want, you can ask for a few money, and people won't have to pay exp expensive uh, tickets to watch you. And you can do small gigs, so you need to have many formulas. You need to work with uh, a five-member band and with a duo band. And in order to make money and to live out of your music, you cannot have only one project. I cannot have today my own band and say, OK, I have my band, this is my music, and I'm going to do uh, 40 gigs per year. You need to do 40 gigs per year to live out of your music. This is a huge, this is almost one gig per week. So if you think you're going to do that, this is very difficult. Uh, what you have to do is to diver diversify your network, artistic network, which means you have to work with dancer, you have to work with theater, you have to work with poets, you have to work with many, many people in order to have many networks so you can do something in the theater network and then something in the music network and then maybe with the poet network. And then you can have three shows and you can do maybe 10 or 15 shows of each that's the only way musicians can live today. OK, this was the first part. Uh, in the second part, second part is more difficult, I have to admit. So what is it to be a political artist? To be honest, I cannot answer this question. I don't know what is it to be a political artist. I think that everything is related to politics. And uh, I come from Beirut, Lebanon, and in this area, we brief politics, we eat politics, everything is politics. So unfortunately, I, I 
cannot say I was forced to do politics, but it was the only path that I had. And so I took it. What is it to make politics? Well, there is many ways to make politics. Uh, there is what I would call the aesthetical politics, which means only my drawing or my song will sound like politics, but I don't have something to say. For instance, there is a lot of um, pop art bringing Marilyn Monroe and Obama and saying, is this politics? I don't know. I, I think this is only the aesthetical politics. Um, before doing politics, there is social. I have worked with the UN. Uh, and social is very important in music, especially in hip-hop, because hip-hop was created on social basis. So, um, talk about this song. Um, okay, it's, I'm going to make it short. Well, the, in 2006, the UN came at me and said, okay, we want to talk about uh, people with disabilities but in a new way, in a modern way, not about pity and charity and not religious-based organization. We want to talk, we want to give awareness in the Arab world. Um, we want the people to accept people with disability like anyone else. And so we've worked on a song. It was very hard. We've worked with a lot of people because obviously I don't have any disabilities, so I had to work with people to understand their life. And that leads us to another song and another clip. The song is called Ikhtilaf Tabi'i, The Difference is Normal. So can you have more, more sound, please? بينزل على الدرج بيمشي اخر مفرق على اليمين بيعرف حاله لوين رايح بيعرف حاله هو وين بسلم على الجار ما بيعمل حاله مش شايفه مع انه بحياته ما شافه لانه شفيق ما بيشوف صار له 10 سنين عايش بالعتمه بفيق بالعتمه بياكل وبيمشي بالعتمه بس ما تشفع على الشفيق ولا تزعل له بيعرف كل المدينه مش عايزك انك تدله رانا كانت عم تلعب تحت البيت مع الاولاد مثل كل يوم لقيطه وبسيكليت فجاه صار في قصف ونصابت بالشخصية من ورا الحرب صار عندها اجر اصطناعية بس كملت تعيش حياة طبيعية تروح المدرسة وهلا صارت صبية مش مطلوب منك تتفهم ولا تشفق عليها مطلوب منك انك تعملها مثلها مثل غيرها اوكي سو يو كان سي ذا ديفرنس بين humanitarian song where the point is awareness to tell people there is a social message and the commercial in the 90s where you are working with a recording label just to make money. I don't need to explain that point. Um, so when I say political artist, a lot of people think that my music is about propaganda, that I have an ideology and that I want to, to give you, to force you to accept this ideology via my music. I believe this is, that does exist, of course, but I believe this is the worst political uh, music on earth. I think that uh, being a political artist is just pointing on the problem, saying, hey, look here, what's going on? Don't you think we can do something? Let's be united. Don't you think that this is wrong? And this is, um, you know, it's a way about talking to people. It is not about master and slave, but it is more about being on the same level and try to understand each other. So I would like to talk about this song that got me into a lot of troubles. I did a song called Lamine, which means for who. And this song is basically I am attacking the Lebanese government and very hard and I am pointing out every single corruption the Lebanese government is doing to the Lebanese people. And, you know, Lebanon is an, Ar is an Arab country, so you can, you, of course, there is freedom of speech more than any other Arab country, but it is still difficult. A lot of people got killed because of writing some uh, article in the journal. So, in this song, um, I'm going to read some of the lyrics. Tell me what is changing in Lebanon, why the life is getting so expensive. Tell me how do they play with finance, what is the secret. 
You want to talk about democracy, I rather talk about oil dictatorship. Uh, we have the most expensive telecommunication in the world and the worst internet connection. There is no electricity, no water, the food is full of chemicals, there is no food inspection, and blah, blah, blah. It's concrete facts. And at the end, I end the song saying, uh, sometimes I feel that the Lebanese government is my enemy. And it's a very difficult thing to say knowing this area, and I mean, you might know the geopolitics in this area. You cannot say that your government is your enemy. You cannot not be uh, patriotic in Lebanon. You have to say, I am Lebanese, I am proud to be Lebanese. And this is very hard to say, no, I'm not proud to be Lebanese. I have a problem with my government, and we are all electing those people, so we should stop voting for them. We should now do something. Of course, I did a video, we're going to watch a part now, and I put it on YouTube. I have, you know, it's like I told you, I have the same, same working, same way of working. And in five years ago, when I had to release an album, I was forced to bring my text before releasing the CD to the censorship department to give them all the lyrics and the demo of the CD and I would come back 10 days after, and they would say, oh, you have to change this. No, we don't like that. This is the army. I have a general in front of me, and he is telling me what I should say or should not say. But he is a very nice guy because he's saying, you know, we are doing this to protect you. Because it's not, we are not threatening you, but you can die. You know, saying those words, you can die tomorrow. It's not me who's going to kill you, it's some crazy people. You know, we live in a crazy country. So, of course, it's a good point. He has a point, maybe he's right. But with the internet, they control, I mean, the censorship department control every CD that are on, in the stores. Now that I don't have CDs, there is no stores, there is no censorship, so fuck them. I don't need to go and say, hey, do you like this? Or shall I change that and this? Or put a toot because you don't like that word. So I took the song and I put it on the internet. Well, unlucky me, six months later, I wanted to do a CD and to sell it because we sell a lot of CDs after the shows. If you do a good show, people will buy all your CDs. This is amazing. This is solidarity between the public and the musician. And that does not exist with a record label. Nobody wants to, be, uh, uh, no, wants to have solidarity with Coca-Cola or Mickey Mouse. You don't give a damn. But a guy who looks like you, who talks like you, you want to help him making his way out. So when I put this song on my CD, they, they just block the CD. But you can find the song on my website. It's a very aggressive song, I have to admit. Etc. Etc. So, yeah, this was a tough song, and since I got uh, in trouble with those with my new friends, I have decided to go further because you know we are human being, and when and when something stops us, I believe that no one here and no one in the world would say, "Okay, I give up. You you win." Self-expression is 
this is why we exist, because we have to express ourselves. And if they, we stop expressing ourselves, we will stop to be human beings. We will, I don't know what we will be. Um, a, year, a year later, or two years later, I wrote a song. Well, this is not really a song. Intichabet means election. Uh, elections in plural, and it was in 2009, and it was one month before the election, and I was so pissed off. And let me explain a little bit how does it work in Lebanon. I won't be long. Um, Lebanon is a sectarian country where there is 18 community living all together, but hating each others. And their election is like each community will vote for one leader, and those leaders will be in power. And those community, obviously, because they cannot vote for each other, they re-vote and re-vote and re-vote for the same guy, or his son, or the son of his son, for the same family. So basically, there is six family in power in Lebanon since uh, the 60s. So the election is bullshit, of course. And more than that, then, this is the same guy who did the war, who killed people that were militia that are today in power. So I was about to write a song, but I decided that it is too complicated and I, have, I don't have the time and I don't need to make rhymes. So I just took a microphone, I put any music I got, and I started talking. But in an ironic way, it was a funny way. And I talked about religion, and talking about religion, and talking about uh, secularism in this country is very hard, because you're just putting the finger where it hurts, and this is very complicated. So uh, basically, I talk about the civil marriage, because civil marriage uh, does not exist in Lebanon. It is as simple as that. If those communities begin to get married, then their sons will be Lebanese and not Shia, Sunni, Catholic, and blah, blah, blah. And this is what the song is about. And obviously, a lot of people hated me, even not from uh, the government, but from the people. And Basically, what I say is, I don't mind you being religious, but can you keep religion out of politics? That's what, I, what I'm asking for. After that, um, uh, people did what they call the Lebanese-like pride. I was one of them, and um, basically I was on the communication, so I did a song, I did some stuff, what is the Lebanese-like pride? It is people like you and me, citizen, who has decided that, it was in 2010 and 2009, who has decided that one day per year, all the secular people will go and march and ask for a secular country. But it is very peaceful. And my role was to bring people to make awareness about what is secularism. In French, we say laïcité because a lot of people in Lebanon would think that secularism is atheism and that we are against religion and against God, which is not, which is not the case at all. So here my goal was not to make a propaganda, but to give awareness, to say I would do a normal concert and at the end of the show I would say, hey guys, come, we're doing a march, blah, 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 it is about that, and then people would ask questions, and that was uh, my role. Uh, to go further into non-propaganda music, when the Arab Spring began this year, uh, I have decided that I cannot write lyrics on the Arab Spring because it is the voice of the people, it is everybody's voice. So I cannot take the message and say, yeah, this is my message, it's for me, only me. Uh, this is selfish and that's not the case. It's a popular movement, so it has to stay popular. And so I went to demonstration and I recorded the people shouting because what they were saying was amazing. They had their own message and it was an amazing message. It was the end of the regime, but not stupidly. It was not fuck the system. No, it was very well constructed with point and they used to shout it very loud in the street. So I recorded and I came back home and I decided to put music on this lyrics, on their lyrics, and 
then I gave the song. I said, everybody can use the song on documentary, in the street, and people play it very loud in the street during other demonstrations. And it gave energy to the people because I believe with those demonstrations, we need rhythm. And rhythm is very important for you to keep your anger, your good anger, not your hate, your good anger up. So basically, um, let's listen quickly to the song. They are shouting, the people is demanding the end of the regime. And when you have this song with 50,000 people shouting a shot with the start and his arms, it's quite uh, impressive. They would have very energy. I, I was one of them. So yeah, they're shouting stuff and then And here, it is going to go. Taura means revolution. And then it goes. Quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. And this is a wonderful part. And at the end, there's a guy saying, thank you, uh, 30 years is enough. So in conclusion, what uh, we can say is, if I was not an independent artist, if I was signed with some big major, could I have uh, done those uh, political songs? I don't only do political songs, but this is part of my work. Uh, I think the answer is no. Uh, being independent and having the small tools to stay independent, it is also being artistically independent and choose your own destiny, choose where, what you want to say and uh, to whom you want to, uh, to talk. Of course, internet and the new alternative media uh, is wonderful because there is no more censorship. And what we can say is between the 90s and now, we have the possibility to make a content in the song, to have lyrics, to have deepness, to talk about something. But because in the 90s, it was only the packaging, only the quality. And we can spread a message very easily without you know, forcing the propaganda stuff. Mm, I think that's all. So thank you for being there. If you have any question, I will answer your questions. Thank you. I'm Tariq, and I'm Masri. I relate to a lot of the stuff. I love, I love your music. I just want to ask. I have a couple of questions. First question is, how do you promote? How do you promote yourself? Obviously, you don't go through mainstream media. You're an independent artist, which I think is the only way that this can work. But do you use? Do you aggressively use social media, or how? How exactly do you do you get the word out? Because as an Egyptian uh, into hip hop active I, this is the first time I've come across you we had to travel all the way to Spain to come across you so thank you so so I'd like we, we, in Egypt I don't think we've heard of you as much as we should we have one common goal we have a lot of commonalities so that's the first question and uh, second question do you have a CD on you or yeah right, I do cool. have uh, the, the, uh, the first question how do I promote myself 
where promotion used to be on uh, through radio and television, but uh, today we have to understand that radio and television won't put those kind of video clips because they think that this is propaganda or they will don't like the aesthetic. So obviously, first of all, it is through internet. But internet is not enough because it is easy to click a like on Facebook. But my goal is to bring people to my concerts. Uh, so the thing is, I connect to a lot of people. I always, always, like 99% of the time, reply to people who ask me questions. And this is a new, a new concept with the internet. It is the relation, like I've talked before, the relation between the listeners and the musician. People get close. Some of them are my friends now. And when I would go to a city, sometimes I would send a message because sometimes I have a data and saying, hey, people, I'm coming, I'm coming there. What do you think? Do you think it's a good uh, venue? Uh, what would you like to hear? Can you? And people love this. They get involved. And if you want to reach people, you have to do it one by one. You cannot talk to a mass and say, OK, I'm popular, and that's it. Yeah. Hi there. And it's uh, the internet is a good way for you to to be known for or, uh, uh, by the people of your country. And uh, that's the question. I I, I mean uh, I don't know if uh, internet is is a is a, a media that people in your country uh, have the ability to to use. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean in in a big in a big way, or just some people have internet? Well, uh, most of the people have the internet, uh, and the young people are very well connected to the internet. I, I believe we have the worst connection on Earth. We have a 255K. It's the, you know, the old telephone. Like, that this is what we have. And I think there are a lot of people trying to have a better internet connection, but uh, they always manage to have a good connection. You know, they, the Lebanese are, I don't know if you, if, you, if you know MacGyver, but the Lebanese are a MacGyver thing. They will put stuff together and they will have a connection and they will get connected. But in my country, it's different because, first of all, Lebanon is a very small country. I don't know, you cannot even see it on the map. And when you're in a small country, you can, you can reach people easily. You just have to go and see them and make concerts in small clubs and then you have a lot of people. And then there is people talk after a good show. When, when I do a good show in Beirut, I know that next week if I do another good show, I will have the double because if there is 100 people, those 100 people, if they love the show, they will bring 200 people and so on and so on. So it is also a way to spread the message. Yeah. Also, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, actually, I've, I've been following your videos for some time, and I appreciate your work. Thank you. Uh, but I have this impression that uh, rappers and online artists and activists are kind of isolated. There's a kind, there's a feeling that there is. Uh, the, I mean, uh, each one has his own struggle, and there is there there isn't much collaboration between artists in different parts of the Arab world, whilst the, the struggle is basically very similar. Do you think, uh, I mean, do, have you had uh, experiences where you collaborated with artists from across the Arab world, and do you think it can help your, your, your own activity as, a, as an artist and as a rapper? I'm from Morocco, by the way. And uh, just a quick note, uh, we have a rapper that actually is imprisoned at the time. Uh, he I've heard he's of him. he's doing basically the same work as you do, yeah. and he was uh, imprisoned. Not, not long ago, like yeah, one right. month ago. His name is Haqid. Yeah, I know, yeah. And he's been imprisoned. So yeah. if you can show some solidarity between artists, that yeah. would be great. I think. I, I think you are completely right when you say we are not connected. I cannot speak in general of every rapper. There is a lot, a lot of rappers nowadays in the Arab world. But I believe uh, I have a project, and this is funny, this is ironic, because I have a project with four other rappers, one from Algeria, Palestine, Jordan, 
but this project was organized by British people and not Arab people. And to, uh, to a, I cannot explain why there is not connection between many rappers. In my last album that I did, and I hope I won't talk about albums anymore because this is a format that should not exist anymore. I have worked with many rappers from all around the world and I can tell you that it was pretty, pretty difficult to get people involved in that project. The point was to bring all the voice, uh, the name of the album is Hip Hop Republic and I did it with the Arab Spring to say we have a new republic and look, a lot of people, not only in the Arab world, are saying the same, uh, but it was very difficult. You know what, the problem I think in music is ego. There is a lot of ego. If you put two musicians here on stage, they won't fit, their ego is too big. And I think if we go further than ego, we can do an amazing job, but we have to learn to go further than ego. Um, I would like to ask you, regarding independent artists, how positive do you see piracy acting with them? Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Um, the, when, when piracy was about pirating Britney Spears, I was the happiest guy on earth because I say, yeah, fuck them. You know, fuck them. Really, I can say it. I mean, have you seen those people? When I say Britney Spears, I'm englobing all that movement. And the rap scene is horrible. I mean, I, I'm not dressed uh, like a rapper, and I do it on purpose. I, today, I'm ashamed to say I'm a rapper, because record labels, they st stigmatize, we say in French, uh, uh, stereotype the rapper who has his, you know, his casket and he's like he's talking about money and bitches and drugs and this is what works because once again we go back to my presentation it is about teenager today teenager don't buy music anymore so stop doing music for teenager they just download so i was very happy that teenager will not finance this bullshit industry. But when I saw my alb album pirated everywhere, I was pissed off in the beginning. Then I realized that it gave me a lot of credibility first, and a lot of people who haven't heard me could download the album. And you know what happened? A lot, a lot of people have this responsibility once they know that I'm an independent artist, and not on my new website, but on my old website, I would say, when you buy music from this website, you are buying directly from the artist. So a lot of people show solidarities. And a lot of people who had downloaded would write to me, I've downloaded your album, and I love it, and now I'm buying it. And that's excellent. Great. I'm, I'm actually happy that you had that experience. Um, I know of one other independent artist, he's an American, who had the same thing with piracy and when he talked to the hackers in question they actually left one track and in the end his CDs uh, more than 10 times were sold because of that pirate thing. Exactly. So. But you know, just a small... Before internet in Lebanon we used to have um, CD copies for... for <laughs> We still do. You yeah, still do. <laughs> yeah. for, for one euro, for one dollar, you can have copies of everywhere. And when my first CD got copied, six months later, I went to Syria. And I'm, I'm telling, it was in 2002, 10 years ago. I was not that popular. I went to Syria and I did the most wonderful concert. Everybody had a copy of my CD and we did 3,000 people on the street in Syria, it was in Damascus, it was wonderful. So, thanks, piracy. <laughs> cool. If there is no more question. Thank you. Thank you for being there. Thank you for listening. <laughs>